Ma. 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 Crunchy, creamy, cookie, candy, cupcake. All right, this is one last midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. So today we're going to take a look at the auto arm and the auto extractor. So sit back and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Two more items that dropped as part of the automation update are the auto arm and the auto extractor. The auto arm requires one aluminum and one graphite and costs 1500 bytes to unlock. The auto extractor requires two steel, a tungsten carbide, and one rubber, and will cost you 7,500 bytes to unlock. Getting both of these will cost you 9,000 bytes, and in order to make the auto extractor, you're gonna need a chemistry lab to make that tungsten carbide. So that means a trip to DeSolo or Calador to get yourself some wolframite before you can make that auto extractor. The auto arm allows you to automatically transfer small items from one spot to another. As you can see, hovering over the auto arm, you have two circles. You have a white circle and a blue circle. The white circle is the pickup area, and the blue circle is the drop-off area. The auto arm, when unpackaged, automatically is turned off, and you need to turn it on to make it start working. Once it's on, it's ready to go. And it will pick up items from the input area and drop them off in the output area. As you can see, the auto extractor will pick off the ground, but it will not place on the ground. And you're required to have some sort of storage or some sort of platform in the drop-off area for it to deposit. The auto extractor will pick up any number of resources as long as it's a single resource from the input area, regardless of resource type. However, you can tell the auto arm to filter and only pick up a specific resource by placing a resource onto the auto arm itself. So when I turn it on, it will only pull resin from this storage. And you can simulate some sort of transportation system by using auto arms. By spreading out platforms, you can move the resources from one spot, the input area, to the final destination with this kind of scenario. So imagine my final destination was over this hill to a base somewhere. With some work, you could set this type of system up. Let's talk about power and the auto arm. When the auto arm is on, it always consumes power at the amount of one unit per second. So let's look at this example. I have an RTG and my splitter is telling me that the RTG is producing four units of power per second. Currently the auto arms are off and the final output is still four units per second. The moment I turn on an auto arm and look at the end result splitter, you could see that it has a reduction of one unit per second because the auto arm is consuming it regardless if it is transferring goods. So if I was to turn on all the auto arms, you can see I actually negated the power of the RTG because it's being consumed by all four of these auto arms. This is something that you need to take in consideration when setting up your automation processes. You need to make sure that your auto arms have power and that you're also not reducing power from your automation because the auto arms are consuming power always. Turning them off will get that power back and no longer consume that power. Keep this in mind, it's very important because when you're expecting your rest of your base to work at full production speed and you're not considering the amount of power that your auto arms are consuming, you might run into problems. Let's talk about the auto extractor, a very powerful tool to be added to Astroneer for sure. It allows for the automatic extraction of resources from a terrain. And not only that, you're gaining 15 times the amount of resources that you would normally gain if you dug it up by hand. The auto extractor has this little green arm, which is an indicator to tell you how rich the resource deposit is. 
If you place it on a resource deposit, the green arm will appear showing you the quantity of resources that can be gathered from a specific deposit. Make sure to move your auto extractor around so that you're putting it in the most beneficial location of the resources. The auto extractor is a behemoth and you can't run effectively with it. So you're either having to place it down and then move forward or if you happen to have a jetpack you can use your jetpack and fly with your auto extractor so that you can move it to a new location once the auto extractor is done and remember not all resource deposits are the same you can see i'm gaining an enormous amount of resources from this specific deposit so be sure to test deposits before you start your auto extractor. The auto extractor is a power pig. It takes eight units per second to run it at maximum efficiency. And when you turn it on, it will start extracting resources without deforming the terrain. Resources will gather in this area. And once you have a completed resource, it will be deposited to the nearest storage area. Now, luckily, there happens to be two storage areas on top of the auto extractor, which is a perfect place to hold a medium canister. However, this might not be the most effective scenario. You might want to think about using the auto arm with the auto extractor in conjunction with a large resource canister so that you can hold significantly more resources and not have to worry about the medium canister filling up. In this scenario, I happen to have two resources that are pretty close together and I've set up uh, several auto arms and two auto extractors to automatically store items in these two large canisters. For the auto extractor to completely cycle, it takes about eight scoops or one minute to get a single resource out of it. Regardless of how you set your system up, the auto extractor and auto arm are welcome additions into Astroneer and will allow you to do some very cool base configurations and mining operations. All right, so that was my video on the auto arm and the auto extractor. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not subscribers, think about subscribing. We've got a great community of people here. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you know when I go live and when I post new videos. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.